All right, let's add another person. So now we've got another dependent. And then I'm gonna jump on over here and say now we've got uh, two dependents. So I'm gonna add another one. Let's say we're paying for both of them. And let's say we're paying them to the same institution, 5,000 each. So I'm gonna say qualified dependent care, 5,000 each we'll say, but it's going to the same institution. So I'm gonna have the same institution having 10,000. So now I've got two people Right, so you, you might have them going to two different institutions or you could have them going to the same institution, which might look something like this. So if we jump back to the form 1040, then we're gonna say, all right, Anderson, two dependents now, uh, 20, let's bring the income back up to 100,000. 100,000 on the income, so we don't hit any limit there. And so I'm gonna go boom. And then 100,000, page number two, so we have the 4,000 for the child tax credits, and now we're up to the 1,200, which is pulling ultimately from the 2441. So now we've got the, the institution amount of the 10,000, two, two people, two children, five and five. We got limited to the not the 3,000 for one, but 6,000, but it's gonna cap at 6,000 even if we go above that, even though we paid 10,000, and then it's going to be picking up that 20% based on the qualified amount, which is the 6,000. And that's where we get the 1,200. We don't have any, uh, we still have tax. So we're not going to hit a limit because of the non-refundable. That's what's pulling over. Now, if I add one more, let's do one more here because why not at this point? So we'll add another one. Uh, not there. Hold on a second. I'm going to add another one here. So we'll say another and this is gonna be Eric. Eric, and we'll say on the second one, we'll say we paid for Eric another 5,000 to the same institution. So we're gonna say, all right, qualified 5,000, same institution. And so now this is at 15,000. Now you would think if they capped it three, three, and three, we would get three, six, nine, but no, it's still gonna cap it at that 1,200. So if I go to page one, we're at three kids. We paid all three of them. We still got the child tax credit, which is at 6,000, uh, but we, we're still at the 1,200 here for the child and dependent care expenses. So if I go down to the 2441, then you can see that we're still here because it capped it at the 6,000 for two or more children. All right, so we have a, a similar situation if married. So let's go to the married situation, but we would have to have both spouses working would be the general idea in order to take the credit. So for example, here, I just switched it up to married, uh, but I didn't I didn't assign the W-2 wages to, to, to the spouse, Jane here. So now we still have the three dependents, 100,000. Now the, the standard deductions at 259, getting us to the 741 page number two, we still get the 6,000 child tax credit, but we don't have anything being calculated for the other credits because I didn't assign any income to the other spouse. So this is where it becomes important in tax software to, uh, to assign the income. So let's imagine they both earned 50,000 with two separate W-2 forms, W-2. If I don't, if I don't check off, notice that if I do this, 50, thousand and fifty thousand and let's say that these were two w-2s for for two different spouses that's legitimate but i didn't properly mark off which w-2 is for which oftentimes it doesn't matter because they're one entity for taxes right they're one financial entity so it's still a hundred thousand everything looks correct but the problem is here this particular credit is gonna be based on whether or not each individual spouse had earned income. So I have to make sure that I go and say, I'm checking this one off for the spouse so that I can assign that to the spouse so that they can have their their earned income so that with the, the credit will then populate within the software. So now if I go back to the 2441, we've got the same kind of scenario, but the idea being that that both spouses have to be working because if it was a one spouse working household, a traditional household, you would think that the, the other spouse could take care of the kids and you wouldn't need the expenses in order to work. Whereas a single family household, 
you would think that uh, they that would be the case. Again, it's kind of funny the way these these laws populate. You can you can see that makes sense to one degree because you're like that, but it also kind of disincentivizes marriage again because because the you know anyways. So now the other thing to be aware of is you might get say a benefit if you're if you're working for an employer and you get a benefit say on a w-2 that the employer is paying for dependent care and remember when you have an employee employer kind of situation uh oftentimes what the employer can have their money go a little bit further if they can give money that would be have a tax benefit to the employee like a 401k plan the 401k plan then has the income not included in box one so the employer is able to pay the employee without having that significant tax benefit or at least by deferring it so if you could do that with other things like like a dependent care or something like that have the employer be able to pay and not include it in income that would be great but it gets a little bit confusing then if you have a credit that could be possible and then you've got this dependent care benefit so let's imagine for example, box 10 of the W-2 has, has dependent care benefit of 6,000. So then if I go back on over, notice it's limiting the credit here uh, to the 1,000. So we still said that we paid uh, the 15,000, but, and then the 5,000 each, but it says here, add the amounts on line D to enter 3,000 if you had one or qualifying person, 6,000 if you had two or more, uh, if you complete part three, so it's going to be the 1,000. So if we go to part three, then dependent care benefits, we have the 5,000, da, 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 I won't go through uh, the whole thing, but uh, the general idea is that we had to limit it to the 1,000. And by the way, the reason it got limited to the 1,000 instead of uh, the 6,000 wiping it out entirely is because generally, if I if I go back on over here, usually this number will be kind of capped at 5,000 because you can get the dependent care benefits that go over the 5,000, but then uh, that amount over the 5,000, the 1,000 would generally be included in box one of the W-2, which means it would be subject to the the uh, federal income tax, right? So the 5,000 amount might be in box 10 and possibly not in box one, therefore not subject to the federal income tax. That's the part you're getting the benefit from. Now also note we have the age test for the children, but if they were over 12 and disabled at the time, so the age test, uh, the you know, under, under 13 was it, uh, the age test. So if they were over that age but disabled, then uh, that would be kind of a, a exception to that general age test rule and then you also want to be looking into the idea of if the care provider is the taxpayer's household employee because you want to make sure that if the, you have a household employee that you're properly calculating this credit as well as properly dealing with the household employee situation and seeing if you need to be dealing with like payroll taxes social security and medicare and uh, that kind of stuff also remember that the EIN number here would be the typical thing that you would get from an institution if it's a if it's a institution of some kind other than that then you would think the it would be a social security number an SSN